Hey guys, Sean from Living Seeds, your seed guru. Today we are talking about Aphidia Aphidiomyza, Aphidia Miser, otherwise known as Aphidend. So this is a, a, a gall midge. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a fly, literally it, it, it's a fly. And what this fly does is the larva of this fly is predatory. So what it does is um, it literally crawls around on the tomato plant and it, 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 it chows down on aphids. It has a venomous bite. So when it bites into the aphid and injects a paralyzing toxic substance, it paralyzes the aphid and then it proceeds to suck all of the juices out of the aphid. Now, these little, these little guys, and I'm going to try and show you these guys when I open it. So I'll open it before I actually attach it to the plant. There's a specific way that you need to do it. And hopefully you'll be able to see a couple of these little gold midges flying out. So let me explain to you the life cycle of this gold midge, because it's really, really interesting. And what you need to understand is is how it's closely intertwined with, with the life cycle of, of the aphid. Now, aphids are, are drawn to young leaves. They're drawn to the young pale leaves, especially leaves that have a little bit of a yellow coloring to them. And those are the soft leaves that these aphids are drawn to because they're literally easy to get into. And the aphids suck the sap out of the, out of, well, in this case, the tomato plant. So they suck the sap out of the tomato plant. And what the aphids is looking for is it's looking for the sugars in the plant. So if you are using chemical fertilizers and things like that, the plants have a high sugar content that really attracts the aphids to the plants. If you're using um, organic gardening methods, the plants tend to have a lower sugar content. However, let's just change the discussion back to what the aphids need. So the aphids are sucking the juices out of this plant. And what happens is it's, it, it needs to get rid of the excess juices. And the excess, even the cows agree, the excess juices are ex, or, or sugars are excreted as honeydew out of the back end of the aphid. Now, this honeydew is imported, is important to Aphidia letes, um, and it's, it's, it's a major issue for yourself on your crop because the honeydew it, it creates an environment um, that, uh, that stimulates the production of harmful funguses on your plants. The, uh, the honeydew, it leaves like a blackish substance on, the, on, on your plants. It's a sticky substance. It just doesn't look nice. If you're selling your produce, you can't sell the produce that is, that is um, tainted by honeydew. And um, it's, it's a case of, yeah. However, the Aphidia letes, as soon as they hatch, so these little females inside here, so they are, are busy hatching. There's a thousand wasps. So there's a thousand wasps. And, oh, sorry, they're not wasps. They're gall flies. There are a thousand gall midges inside here. And the ratio is approximately one to one. So you've got 500 females. And she can lay a couple of hundred eggs within the first week of her life. Um, she doesn't live for much more than 10 days. So you've got a, a, a 10 day cycle. The majority of the eggs are laid within the first couple of days. And what she can do is she's able to, she's got these long antenna and she's able to actually smell aphids on the plants. So she'll be able to fly around and she'll smell any aphids that are on these plants. And I'm I'm a hundred percent sure there's a thousand five hundred tomato plants inside this tunnel. We've got uh, one, two, three, four. We've got six or I think we've got eight tunnels with tomato plants inside them. So we have a couple of tomato plants on Living Seeds Farm, and um, I, I'm guaranteed that there are there are aphids on these plants. We can't find the aphids, and it's not our job to find the aphids. It's these guys' job to find the aphids. So the gall midges tend to, um, they will hang by their front feet. So I don't know if you've seen um, in, in your house, especially now as we're going to summer, you have what, what's called these hang flies. And it's these large flies that sort of hang. Very similar process with the gall midges. They will hang at the bottom of the plants. They'll hang underneath the leaves quite close to the quite close to the ground. And in the evening, so it's now 
I think we're approaching about quarter past, half past five now um, in the evening. And what will happen is that these gall midges will, will start moving through the plants looking for aphids and laying eggs. And what they'll do is if they find a colony of aphids, they'll lay their eggs literally right next to the colony of aphids. Um, them laying the eggs next to the aphid doesn't disturb the aphids, so the aphids don't release a... Um, a, um, a, a um, a flight pheromone and aphids are able to release a flight pheromone where they release the flight pheromone and literally the aphids just drop off the plants into the soil and a lot of aphids die like that but a lot of them don't and they'll actually climb back up the plants to to continue the process so with the gall midge they lay the egg but they don't um they don't create that that um that flight response inside the aphids and what happens is those tiny little eggs hatch into little grubs that crawl along the surface and they literally crawl along the surface of the plant and the first thing that these grubs eat is honeydew okay which is really cool so they they eat the honeydew however they have to move from honeydew to aphids very very quickly otherwise what's going to happen is they're actually not going to develop properly and what happens is they'll eat honeydew just so that they don't dehydrate or they'll suck on the honeydew so they don't dehydrate and then they'll move on to aphids and they'll start on the small aphids they'll bite the small aphids inject their toxin into the small aphids suck all the juices out and they will rinse and repeat that process until they get large enough when they're large enough they uh, want to metamorphosize and they'll drop off the plant into the soil they'll spin a little cocoon around themselves and that cocoon is very sticky it, it sticks sand particles around the cocoon which helps to camouflage the cocoon uh, five to seven days later a new gall fly or a gall midge hatches out of that and it starts the process all over again which is absolutely fantastic the nice thing about these gall midges over here is that they will attack all species of aphids if it's an aphid this guy is interested in it and they're going to they're going to eat them and they're going to eat them um, at a rapid rate so what we're going to do is I'm going to open this container and let's see if we can actually zoom in so you can see what these gall midges look like and then I'm going to attach the container to one of our tomato plants okay so let's take this off and I don't know if we're going to see any gall midges coming out. Let me see. Oh, there's a tiny one. I don't know if you can see into that. Can you see in there? Can you see that little gall midge inside? There we go. Did you see it fly out? That's fantastic. So that's how tiny these guys are. Okay, so this bottle has a, 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 sticky, a sticky side over here and they normally want you to stick it onto a, a, a leaf like this. They want you to stick it onto a leaf like this. We have just tried it and the leaf just, it's just too small. It's actually not a leaf, they want you to stick it on, on a branch. However, these tomato plants are a little bit too young. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, okay, and I'm just going to stick it around this training string over here like this okay and I just want to make sure that there's no sticky side that these little gall midges can land on because a gall midge that lands on a sticky side is a gall midge that's not working cool so what's going to happen now is that these gall midges it's, it's filled with a very fine sawdust and these gall midges are going to hatch out of here and they will fly and disperse through this tunnel literally looking for tomato plants that have a couple of aphids on them and they are going to sort the aphids out for us.